If you have a family relying on your income, you need life insurance. But finding the best quote shouldn't take a lifetime. That's where Policy Genius comes in. In minutes, Policy Genius could save you 50% or more simply by comparing quotes from America's top insurers. Once you apply, the Policy Genius team handles all the paperwork and red tape. To save on life insurance and get protection for you and your family, head to policygenius.com today. The following podcast is not affiliated with the developers who have created the games being reviewed. The reviews are solely the opinions of the hosts to be used to make an educated decision on what games to download and play. Hello gamers and welcome to Budget Arcade, a free-to-play gaming podcast to help you navigate through the growing realm of free-to-play games. I'm Scott. My name's Jeff. And I'm Mark. And welcome to episode number 66. Ooh. I can't wait till we get to episode 69. The most... Oh gosh. This is the most evil episode. Not really. Oh We gotta my do 600 gosh. more to get there. And piece of what, cake. 666? Six, six, six. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, and what was this week's game, Mark? Uh, this week we played Team Fight Tactics, developed by... Riot Games. Uh, you may know them from In the News recently. Other, I've never played that game. What's In the News? Uh, ask Donald Trump. Uh, wow. <laughs> hey, let's get political. <laughs> let's do politics. <laughs> Everyone will love it. Uh, other games by Riot Games. Uh, League of Legends. Legends of Runeterra as episode 61? 62? I don't know. Um, Stonehearth. Rising Thunder. Uh, it was released back in June of 2019, and it is out on the Android, iOS, PC, and Mac. Gameplay. All right, so this is another auto battler, you know, Elliot's favorite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We invited but... him, and he punked out. He's, nah, I, I'm going to be out of town. Not only did he punk out, but he didn't even record his reaction to the game mm. or. Mm. Mm. Write a commentary like mm. he said he was going to. Mm. Good job, Elliot. Mm. Way to go, Elliot. He's lucky this is PG. Yep. Ah. So we go played on. multiple auto battlers so far. We've done, what, Chess Rush. We did Dota Underlords. Chess Royale, Dota Underlords. This will be our fourth auto battler. Is that correct, Jeff? Yeah, and there's still Drodo Auto Chess out there to do one day. Aren't Ooh, you excited, I, Mark? I, I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. This is what So, happens. Jeff, you want to drop the simula- similarities of this auto battler to the other ones that we've played so far? Yeah, of course. So, uh, I'm just going to run down the basics. So, the basics are you queue up with seven other players, so for a total of eight, and you go round by round drafting players from a store, each one costing gold. Uh, you have, they range from prices from one to five. As far as how powerful they are, whenever you get three, they upgrade. Whenever you get three of the same unit, they upgrade to level two. And whenever you get three two stars of the same unit, they upgrade to level three. So that's nine of the same unit to get them to level three. Each character has uh, at least two, uh, like an alliance or a race. I don't know what they call them in this game. It's not quite as clear, uh, but they usually have an alliance uh, two, we'll just call them alliances. They usually have two alliances or three. Some of them do. And when you activate those alliances by having a certain number of them on the board, you get certain benefits. And this game has some differences, though. It goes up to nine as opposed to ten levels. So when you level, you get to place an extra piece on the board up to ten, like in most auto battlers. This one goes to nine. However, there's an item you can build in the game that brings you up to 10. 
There's the interest thing that you're used to if you've played any auto battler. Every 10 coins you have at the end of a round, you get one interest. So up to 50 coins. So if you have 50 coins, you get five interest. So along the way, you're going to be collecting items. And these items, when you combine any two of them, create another item. And that's where the game really kind of differentiates itself is this item system. And knowing how to use the items is insanely key and also one of the most difficult parts of the game to get your head around, at least in my opinion. And I played a lot of TFT. Yeah, that was probably the, like, one of the most, because this is the first time I've ever played this game. So uh, it was for, for this episode. And this is your first auto battle or two, correct? No, I played a little of the, uh, of what, uh, the chess, chess rush, chess rush. Yeah. Chess rush. Okay. Um, so like I was telling Jeff before we started recording, uh, these, I, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of these type of games. I mean, I like the idea behind it. I just, I don't like the hands off part, but this, this game just seemed to be very, daunting to me as a first time player mm-hmm. uh, so you know like i was ex- i was expecting it to be very similar to chess rush and while there are a lot of similarities there was a lot of things that weren't similar and that caught me off guard and i'm like well wait what what the heck does this do and and i had i found myself looking up a lot of uh a lot of stuff as it came to the gameplay but we can talk about more of that as we get into it yep so as you go along, you still have these, like, what I, what people call creep rounds, where you play against non-playable characters and they drop items. Another thing that's unique to this game is they have a carousel. Uh, every few rounds, uh, you go into a room with all the other players, and they're in the center of this room are all these chess pieces, each one with an item attached, walking in a circle, and then it lets you pick from those in reverse order of your current ranking in the game. So, and it goes in groups of two. So the bottom two players get to go first and the top two players get to go last. And then you can sell that character to get the item, or you can pick them because you want the particular uh, piece to to maybe finish a build or whatever. And then it go and then the other thing is that this game uses a hex board as opposed to like your general looking chess eight by eight board this uses a hexes and that really doesn't have that big of an effect on it uh, but you're placing your pieces like you would any time else and they auto battle from there I, I don't know that there's much else to add to the gameplay aspect of it we we've done enough chess game auto chess games if you played one you kind of get what to expect but again the item system's really the big differentiator all the auto battles that i played have have item systems but none of which that I found to be as complex as this one. Uh, let's talk about that carousel a little bit. It's the hardest part of this whole game. Yes. Well, that and it's there's there's no transparency in this chess game than there are in a lot of the other ones. And the carousel definitely demonstrates that I think the most in any part of the gameplay within this game. Now, what do you what do you mean by transparency, Scott? So, okay, so chess rush, you can you know you click on your units, it'll tell you pretty much everything you need to know about the units. Like everything is like there within your fingertips to be, mm-hmm. be able to figure out how to play. This game, however, does not have that transparency. You have to like kind of dig right. while you're playing to find any of that information out, and then like. It, you're having to figure that information out while you're in the middle of playing because there's no like real like there's a tutorial but it's like one match long and it doesn't really highlight anything on there which is really disappointing because the legends of rune Terra game that is made by riot games as well has a fantastic tutorial and shows you all of the game mechanics within that tutorial that you can learn everything you need to know about the game this game does not have that whatsoever. So you've got that carousel of a bunch of different characters, and you have to know, sight unseen, which characters you're looking for mm-hmm. just by the way they look. Right. And so what 
kind of also hurts that is when you open the store in this game. So like in Chess Rush and Dota Underlords and uh, at the Drodo Auto Chess, basically all the other ones I've played, when you open a store, you have the in-game character model there to select. And it just kind of reinforces what that character, when you pick them, that's how they're going to look when they're on your board and on your bench. But in this game, you get a piece of artwork, a picture. And a lot of times they don't even look like what they're supposed to. Like there's a, the, there's a character named Rumble that has a big mech, but you don't see this big mech in his portrait. You see this little guy that looks like Rocket Raccoon. And, but when you click it, you see a big mech. And I, to me, and I think Scott nailed it, and it's my biggest complaint about this game, and I've played more auto battlers than anyone except for maybe Nomic, that you need to have transparency, like Scott said, that information needs to be front and center for you to learn. If you're like Dota Underlords and Chess Rush, like when we were playing those games, we didn't know what we were doing. But all that information was there for us to tap and find very easily. And even in-game, both Dota Underlords and Chess Rush has an in-game encyclopedia while you're in your match. So let's say you're running, uh, in this case, infiltrators. And you want to know what other infiltrators are there that you might be able to get. And so you could go into an encyclopedia on other games and find out everything about that alliance or that class in this game you can't do that in game and you can't really even do it out of game uh you go out of game they don't have like a character lineup where you can go and read about them and learn about them when you're not even and i'm talking about mobile there might be something on pc but on mobile you can't read up and do your research it's just all of that stuff isn't there it takes for granted the fact that you know how to play the game well so one of one of the things that and then Scott hit on it uh, just a few minutes ago the the my biggest thing was picking picking the units at the start of every round or whatever and I had to memorize my unit's name right um, yeah that I started yeah, that was with. the only way to do it um, and I felt I found that to be because there I, I forget how many spaces that are on like your I guess you're essentially your bench um, yeah 10 but you know i had and when your bench gets full you're like holy crap was that Catherine or uh ziggy or um and i found the only ones that you could really keep track of were the the outlandish looking ones right um the you know the, the funny looking ones the the robot well, even though there was like three different robots that all looked very similar for their their image um yeah, they like have spacesuits on all, like every single one of them, and they're like a mech of some sort. Yeah, but right. it's like, which is which? Yeah, and th- that just it completely threw me for a loop, and I f- I found myself selling units to get more gold, so I could refresh the uh, the list, and then only to realize I was out of time, and I passed up the unit I was looking for just simply because I didn't realize that. The unit I had on the board was the picture right. of what was available, and I was like, "You sons of!" And I'll second that was the toughest thing about trying to learn this game is that the pictures are there as opposed to the in-game character models. That would be a huge change they could make, in my opinion. I don't see them doing it because the game's more popular than any other auto battler that I know of, but. And the other thing is, is like, like I was saying, even in Chess Rush, you can tap, like if you have, uh, you know, demons on the board, you can tap in the upper left where they show you what you have active and see a list of the other, uh, you know, pieces in that class. And you can tap that piece and it'll tell you what it is. It'll tell you what tier it is. So you know whether you can expect it soon or not. And it just really doesn't give you anything to go on. So if you want to learn how to play TFT, you need to go on different Wikipedias. You need to watch lots of YouTube. You need to watch, you know, streamers on Twitch. And to me, 
even with all of that, I still don't get it. Like, I'll see it. Oh, this item's really good on this character. I'm like, okay, why? Help me learn how to make that decision, you know? And they're just, there's just no descriptions that help in any way. And I, uh, you have to go outside of the game to try to learn how to play it. And it's definitely frustrating because it does feel like it's deeper than some of the other games. And like we've said, it's not very clear who's in what. Oh, that's the other thing. Like the characters, a lot of them look the same. And there's several purple sorcerers. Now, is that Jandra? Is that this? I don't know. You know, um, now I played enough know where I can probably know them by sight, but it doesn't. It's not immediately appealing. Like, go and look at Chess Rush. All of those characters look unique. You can tell what they are when they're on your board. And it's just easy to tell because they're all colored different. They they dress different. They look unique. The other thing is, is when you open up the shop in this game, it'll tell you if you buy a particular unit, whether you are going to level up. So if you have two of a unit, it'll highlight them in the shop and you buy it and then they level up. But what it won't do is highlight it when you have one of that unit or four of that unit or seven of that unit. Right. So, yeah, then you're like, oh, is that the one I want? And again, you can't look at the board and say, I've got this guy and that's how he looks in the shop. He looks the same way. You can't do that. But again, we're going to just talk about Chess Rush. This is Chess Rush episode two. You go back to Chess Rush when a character pops up. It tells you whether or not they are part of an alliance you have active or on your bench. And it tells you exactly how many of that unit you have. So if an eighth unit pops up in the store, I have seven of those. I want to buy that. It just makes it clear. You don't have to guess. You don't have to research what items do and where they need to go. And like the item system in not only chess rush, but the Drodo auto chess give you some hints, some clues of what to do with this stuff. They give you a little thumbs up to let you know if you should put that item on that character. And it's just frustrating. Like, cause I, and I'm, I ha- I found I had problems even putting the items on the right characters. And then oh, yeah. like once the items on the character, I can't even, t- couldn't even tell which character the item was on without, like you had to click on the character and it would show what items are on there. Mm-hmm. Whereas again, chess rush, you can click on the item box and it'll show you all your items and which characters they're attached to. Yeah. And now, then, what, what did you, what did y'all play on? Did y'all play on mobile? Oh, I only PC? play on mobile. I've okay. played, yeah, on, I played PC, on mobile as well. And it's basically the same issues. Okay. Um, I think, okay, so let's talk about some good things. The game runs great on mobile. I, I I'm, playing on a pixel 3a it runs pretty great i'll have a couple graphical glitches late game when all the action's kind of happening and then when the game's over and it zooms in on the winner there's a bit of a like stuttering there it's pretty minor the load times are actually pretty bad especially compared to other games of this nature I'm trying to think of the other good things the boards are nice looking the graphics are good I don't. The character models are pretty good, even though you can't really tell. Yeah, some of them you can't tell the difference, like you said. But then, like, after the round's over, they celebrate, but they all dance. And it's bad dances. And I think (laughs) they're trying to be funny, or it's part of League of Legends or whatever, but. Yeah, I think it's part of League of Legends. Because you got to remember that this is a add on to League of Legends. All the characters are based Mm. off of characters from that game. So I want to point out. One other thing that Dota Underlords does really well that none of the other ones do is on on mobile, when you press something and move it, you get this nice little rumble in your phone when you move over the board, and it just makes it feel a little bit nicer and to let you know when you're placing things where you want to place them. And I'd like to see that in other games, but that's just one other thing that they, they do great. And so... It's- one thing that this game does that I noticed that Chess Rush doesn't, and I don't know about any of the other auto battlers, but the uh, like in game in a certain round, characters will drop um, items, and you have the ability to move your—I uh, don't even know what you call them—your um, your, um, 
NPC or your uh, your hero. avatar. Yeah, and you can move it onto the board uh, to run to get these items, and the items either give you add-on items for characters or uh, they give you actual mm-hmm. um, actual gold. characters f- or gold, right? Uh, for your uh, for your bench. Mm-hmm. I thought that. Let was me for- just say, I hate that. <laughs> because then you have to take away from what you're doing, trying to figure out what characters you're going to buy next, to actually click on those items so your character runs over there yeah. and picks up those items. And and speaking of which, uh, there's something and that I forgot all, to... They will stay there unless you pick them up. And yes. Chess Rush has the similar mechanic where you can go pick up your items, but if you don't pick them up, they automatically fall in your chest after a few seconds anyway. Yes. So now I want to go back again to the carousel thing. There's an issue that I have on that as well, not just the fact that you can't tell which character is which, but say you click on a character that you want. If your avatar walks through another character, Mm -hmm. it picks up that character instead of the one you're going after. Right. And when you're playing with touch controls, it can be pretty finicky. And you're almost always racing someone to units. Yes. And so you have to tap them around the circle to get the guy you want, right? And so uh, it would be kind of cool. I actually like the idea of the carousel. I like this way of getting to pick, ooh, do I want that character? Well, they don't really have the item I want. That character has the item I want. I'll go get that one. I like that mechanic. It could be executed better. I almost wish it were just like a, a shop that popped up and you just press what yeah. you want. Um, I think that would make it a lot better. But yeah, I'm with the, you on uh, that. The, there are too many times I've picked up the wrong character because of the, the interface. The one, one thing that this game doesn't do that Chess Rush does, and I think does well, is when you level up a character like level two or level three, it actually shows you above the character in chess rush the the stars yes um, and yeah. this this game does not and that that drive that drove well, me nuts. actually it it does mark um if you look at the character's health bar there's like a it, no, roman numeral two but next it, to it's like, on the on side the, of it, the right? health it's bar on the side of yeah the health it's on the left hand right. side of their health bar but it's it's nothing that like stands out right like in chess rush where you're like okay yeah that's definitely a a, a two-star ranked character these you look at them, you're like, I can't tell if that's a two. Like, I think it's actually the border of it changes to silver, if I'm not mistaken. And then once you get them to three star, it changes to gold, if I if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, and you can tell well. when you have a three star because they're sort of highlighted in gold. It's real easy. Well, that's definitely a three star. But oh, so here's now the other thing. Like, oh, go ahead, Scott. But I got another complaint. But go ahead. So I got, I got a question for you guys. I did not notice, but as you level them up two star and three star, do the avatars of the characters change? Because I know in Chess Rush, you know, you get your second level character. They look bigger and meaner and tougher. And when you get them to three stars, they look even more impressive. But I didn't notice if they did that in this game or not. Uh yeah, I think they do. It, it's not it's not a like a huge yeah uh, difference, but there there are like I think the the mech once you get to like level two and uh, level three of them, they they have large armor, um, you know, like it just upgraded. I think one of them changes colors, but I mean, it, but there are so many similar looking characters across the board from level one to level two that it's it's not a it's not a difference that you automatically catch. It's right. um, it's something that like when you have five units on the board and the other the other person has five units, so you got ten ten things all trying to battle each other. It gets lost in translation. It gets lost in in the um, in the scheme of things, and and you're just you're when you're when you're trying to purchase additional units that can become an issue because one there's a lot of things going on on the screen at all times it's it's it, the screen is never not busy and you have all of this information available to you it doesn't all present itself like we want it to but uh you have all this information available to you and 
And at different times, there's always something going on either on the left side of the screen or the right side of the screen, the middle of the screen. Um, it's just... It, the, yeah, information I, overload. Yeah, it's... Information yeah. underload. Hold on. Yeah, that too. Like, <laughs> so here's one... Here's probably my biggest, hugest complaint about Most this huge. game that, that really kind of represents... <laughs> I'm glad you caught that, Mark. What's that? <laughs> Mark was correcting your grammar. What did I, was, I, say? I was about to. <laughs> you said hugest, which is not a word. Most Hey Google. Huge. Is Big hugest league. a word? Huge is used as an adjective to mean extremely large, enormous, similarly to vast and immense. Do you want to hear huge used in a sentence? No. Anyway, who cares? The, the defeat uh, in his voice is evident. No, I, I, yes. I, I'll have to go to dictionary.com because if literally can not mean literally anymore, anything's possible. Um, so the biggest problem... A- anything is fr- figuratively possible. There you go. Thank you. Um, misuse of literally is something that chaps my butt. Uh, okay, so... There's creams for that. <laughs> <sighs> So my biggest problem, and really the the litmus test, the the sign that this game doesn't want to give you any information, is every auto chess game I've played has a way to press one button or one thing on the screen and see the entire lobby, see what they're running, see their alliances, right? And you could say, ooh. Oh, I, you know, I did not even notice that. Right. That's a very good point. And so if, and that's a huge thing for auto chess games because all of these characters that get pulled are from a shared pool. So if you see a lot of people running infiltrators or made, or, you know, sorcerers, you may want to avoid that class because it's going to have fewer of those units for you. But if you see, hey, no one is running um you know blaster i can have there's going to be tons of blasters available and every auto chess game will show you the lobby and even better than that dota underlords when you pull up that lobby if you click a particular unit it will show you how many of those units are in play or on someone's bench so you can really make an educated decision if you want to do that in this game you have to know characters by sight, which we've already described is pretty difficult if you haven't played a ton of this game. And touch each of the player, the other opposing players' names to look at their board at a glance and then say, okay, I think they're running. And you have to look at each one and then look at their alliances and go to the next one. And I've seen experienced players do it and they make it look like it's so easy, but it's not if you're a novice. And... It's such a huge part of playing the game to be able to get that information quickly, but it takes so long to do in between while you're trying to draft your team, arrange your board and your placements, put together your items. And it's just like, it adds one more thing that shouldn't be tough to do, but is. Paywall. I honestly didn't play enough of this to look at the paywall. I can help you. I'm guessing it's probably... uh, cosmetic yeah so let's get into the positives the paywall here is great it's all cosmetics uh generally speaking you can buy eggs that will open and will give you characters uh which are the your little playable character that you move around the map uh and then if you get more of the same they kind of level and look different or cooler and have these little effects you can buy boards so that your board looks different and when people go and, and one of the things this game does is you travel to other people's boards. So people will get to see your board and that's cool. And you spend real money on it. Now there is no in-game currency that I noticed. It's all real world, world dollars. So you buy a pack of them and it's eleven ninety nine or ten ninety nine or you spending. I like that. I, why can't more play things do that? You need $11 and 99 cents. Okay. That translates to me. Um, I really like that. But And then there's a, a battle pass, uh, which if you played any free-to-play game, you know what a battle pass is. You level up as you play to unlock perks. Um, also, 
uh, they give a lot of free eggs away through Twitch Prime, like monthly almost. So uh, make sure you link your account and you can claim those and, and get those for free, which is nice. But uh, no complaints about the microtransactions here. I got one of those Twitch Prime eggs, opened it up, and I had no idea how to yes. set my character. <laughs> that's the other thing. And that's, again, even in this aspect, they don't present you with information, right? So you've opened your egg. Okay, now what? You know, and you have to go digging around in the character place, but you got to know where to find it first. And once you do, you can go and, and find it. You have to scroll through a list of who knows how many of these player characters and, and find the one that you've unlocked. So that's just, that's totally true. It's another thing that's kind of buried and not front and center. What, when I was doing the carousel um, at certain points during the many rounds that I played, the certain characters had like little dollar signs mm -hmm. above them when you grabbed them. And I never could figure out what that was for. I don't know what that's for either. I asked uh, someone who played the game more than me, and they're like, well, I don't know. You know, so <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's cryptic, you know. But you also have emotes. You can, little emote stickers. There's on-screen effects, like when you defeat someone, you shoot this laser, and you can change the color of it. It's just all cosmetic stuff. It, it's typical fare, nothing offensive, the pricing is, it's reasonable. It's like $10 for a board, uh, which compared to Chess Rush is downright cheap because Chess Rush has more dumpy microtransactions than this game does. Like that's one thing that Riot does great as I feel like all of their microtransactions are very fair. And I find that to be the case here. Oh my gosh, no, no doubt. I mean, so I've been playing Runeterra, Legends of Runeterra since we did the episode. I have all the common cards. Uh, most of the rare cards, uh, missing like five champion cards, and then a lot of the epic cards I'm still missing out on. But that's like all the cards I've gotten in that game have been 100% free to play. And it's it's so nice the way Riot does it. And it's all like, you know, you want anything in this game, it's going to be cosmetic stuff and nothing else. Well, yeah, in this game, yes. And even in Runeterra, one thing they do great, which you can go back and listen, is you know how much to pay for something. There's no gamble. Now, I guess you could say in, in TFT, though, there's a gamble when you get one of those eggs, what player character you're going to get. Well, there is. I mean, you're rolling the dice to see what you get. You're not going to get what you want necessarily unless you get lucky. But even still, I, I think that it's clear what it is. And you can choose not to buy it, which, I, you know, is up to you. But that would be a minor gripe. Uh, of how they handle their their paywall i think they've monetized this in a very fair way mark made a good point um we're gonna insert a break here for the ad that way uh it's not at the beginning of the episode people actually can hear the episode straight away okay so we're gonna come back into the replayability replayability um so jeff yeah <laughs> you played this more than us like i legit i played about I think five games total. Yeah. I, and was done with it. I, and I got, you know, I was able to get what I needed to do just from those five games. So this game at least has like the, you know, you know what you're going to get playing it early on and then can decide how far you want to go into the rabbit hole. So by being an auto chess game, it's infinitely replayable because it's heavily RNG based. So every time you play, it's going to be different. Now, there was a patch that came out that people really didn't like because there's really only a handful of winning compositions, but they try to balance it well. One thing that's great is that the developer of this game streams a lot and has a lot of YouTube videos, so you can watch him play it, and he talks about the direction of the game. Uh, so one of the, not to stray too far from replayability, but it does kind of play into it. If you get into this game and you want to learn, what the game lacks in telling you through the game, this has the largest online community. There's more YouTubers, more streamers, more fan support for this game than any other auto battler. So, and I think that is due to the fact that it's on PC. Well, Dota Underlords is on PC. I, I think it has to do with that it's Riot. That's yeah, the, that was well, yeah, yeah, that was going to be mine. And I think people 
like the characters of League of Legends. League of Legends is hugely popular, and I think that That's translated well. to why they have such a big player base. And then that player base turns into people streaming, which turns into more people adding to the player base. I personally, and we'll get into this later, but I think, and you can tell by the way we've talked, Drodo, Auto Chess, Chess Rush, and Dota Underlords, I personally think are better games, but that doesn't translate. I'm obviously in the minority there. And that's fine. Yeah. I, you know, people find something that they like out of this that I don't necessarily get. But I have played a ton of this. I've I've played many many but matches. So- are you really in the minority, Jeff? Come on, you, myself, Nomic. You know, people who have actually played Chess Rush and played other auto battlers right. are they go to Chess Rush more often? Yeah, I think it's a matter of the fact that it's not as heavily known. And if you had like people streaming it more, or, you know, people, I don't know it. it some of the other games I don't feel have gotten the limelight that they deserve because they're far superior, far superior auto battlers compared to this. Yeah. Well, that's that's what happens when you have a very well known developer, right? And, and and I'd agree with that, you know. And I and and a lot of the so a lot of those people have probably played Dota Underlords though. There's a lot of people I watch that have switched from. Drodo Auto Chess and Dota Underlords to TFT. And the main reason they've done that, well, specifically Dota Underlords has like very minimal support now. Like it doesn't update. I mean, it, they update it like pretty frequently, but it's not big updates. And they've been waiting for season two of this auto of the past for eons now. And there's been no word of it. There's no communication. Whereas that's not the case here. Uh, again, you can go to it's Mort Dog is the guy who's the developer. He's like the lead dev, and you can go to his YouTube page or his Twitch channel, and he'll talk about the development and put videos out. So you have that transparency there for what it lacks in the game. Um, but the depth is there if if you get hooked. There's infinite replayability because the depth is there with the item system. Um, and you could almost say that the lack of transparency requires you to play more to be able to get good at the game. Uh, me personally, that's a terrible tactic. That's a terrible uh, tactic. And I switched to this game as my primary one because there was an update to chess rush that I did not like. Um, they added a feature that I was not a fan of and yet. I found myself missing so much of what other games did that I I have to put it down. And Chess Rush just started their new season, so I'm, I'm back into that. But there's a ton of replayability if you get into it. But I think if you're learning the game, you probably need... I think Chess Rush is probably the best game to learn auto-battling in because it's so, well, so let's, clear. Let's talk about that real quick. If you're, if you're somebody that's never played this game or these types of games and you're... And I don't know how many people we're going to have listening that have never played this game, but you have you have to understand that these aren't quick games. Um, you know, uh, an entire match will what take you what fifteen minutes? No, about um, a half an hour. Yeah, it's yeah like if hour, if least. you get deep into the game, you know, like right, it, it, a winning game takes about thirty minutes. Yeah, and so you know. Um, I found I found this game to be much harder than Chess Rush, um, for whatever reason. I don't know if that's just me being completely new to this game or uh, having only experienced Chess Rush, and I don't know if Chess Rush is just easier or. Well, no, it's harder because you can't tell what units are what. Right. That's it's plain right. and simple. That's why it's harder. So when so when I'm playing, you know, and pretty much all of my matches, I finished in the six to eight range. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, and so, you know, my matches were a little bit quicker, I guess, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And it just, to me, that takes, I don't, I don't know if, I don't know how you guys are, but I don't know. I don't have a whole lot of time to be devoting mobile, uh, when I'm playing games on my phone, unless I'm laying in the bed or sitting on the couch or something to spending uh, maybe 30 minutes in a single match and you know i don't know how the the ranking system works mm-hmm. with this game because I, I never dived into it 
but I imagine that once you start a match, and I'm assuming there's ranked matches. Yeah, um, there are. And if you quit, you do are. lose your right. Your, your rank so right so you you have to devote that time and i think that takes that takes some of the replayability out of it um mm-hmm. just simply because you don't have you may not have that or something may pop up and you're like oh crap i gotta go do this and i just started this match and right I and think, uh i think that's a fair criticism for it being on mobile it it, di- it is originally and primarily a pc game now other games basically all of them auto chess games have like a turbo mode or a quick mode where you can play a shorter session uh if you're looking for a toilet auto chess game i recommend uh might magic chess royale actually i don't recommend that because they changed it and they updated it it's horrible now uh i would recommend chess rush turbo or the knockout mode in dota underlords but you're right. That, I mean, that's a fair criticism. They don't have a mobile-friendly mode to go along with the core experience. Takes away from, from I think the ex, the the uh, uh, the total package of the game. Judgment. All right. At the end of each episode, we give this either either at we the end of each episode, firmly, we... every episode at the very end. We give firm and stiff high fives. Do you have you to? Put, do you have to put no. an explicit warning because he said stiff? I'm just gonna wait. No. Listen, I'm just gonna wait for you to start again, and I'm gonna chime in. No. Yeah. Don't. Remember, I don't have notes anymore. I know. <laughs> That's what makes it fun. <laughs> uh, at the end of each episode, we give our firm. the game either our seal of approval or our denial, which is our general thumbs up or thumbs down. Mark, what do you say? It takes two thirds vote. To go one way or another. Thanks. This gets my seal of disapproval. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> the uh, it just uh, I, this these type of games aren't for me, um, and I try to go into all of these games treating it like, hey, I'm you know, I'm experiencing it for the first time. I want to get the core experience, um, even though I didn't play on the PC. But it just. There was too many, and maybe I was a bit spoiled by my dabble into Chess Rush, is because that is my only experience with an auto battler before this game. It just it doesn't do the little things well, right? And um, and I think that with a game that has so much going on at all times, it has to do the small things moderately well, and it just it falls short in different areas that would make it a a really good game so i i I can't recommend it there's another game i would recommend and it's chess rush um so yeah i think that's going to be unanimous um i'm going to go next well because uh all right i am going to give it it as much as i complain i am going to say it's still a good game uh it's still free uh the microtransactions are not immoral uh, they don't affect the gameplay. There are a ton of YouTubers. There's a huge community. So if you want to get help in learning the game, it's out there. You're just not going to find it in the game. My seal of approval is going to come with one caveat. There are better options. Obviously, Chess Rush we've mentioned and um, the Drodo Auto Chess game. Both are uh, supported and have nice big updates where they change the meta up. Dota Underlords is still a really good game, but it is it's starting to feel a little abandoned. This is still a good free to play game, a great one even. But when you come, if this were the first auto battler I played, maybe I'd be feeling different. But there are ones that have come before that have done it better that this game doesn't seem to be aware of. And so we remember when Apex Legends came out, and we've already seen like a ton. Of, of battle royales but when it came out it took everything that those battle royales did well and then it added to it to make it even more better or more huge as or hugest it's, it's more hugest it's more hugest and that's something that they did and then you had games like call of duty said oh well we need to follow up and they, they innovated on the genre and then games like fortnite had to say, oh, we're going to add a pinging system. And that's what I would hope 
that TFT would do. But since they have this built in audience, maybe they don't feel the need to. And obviously they don't because it's hugely popular. You, you might you might be talking about an evolution of gaming, which is kind of what the nope. Nintendo 64 did. Bleep, bleep Mark out. That's, bleep them out. That's that's, that's, that's a weird. non-sequitur. That's, that's weird how oh, that happens. You, you know, though, I was going to bring that up, you know, Jeff, because uh, currently the N64 is getting killed by the PlayStation in the poll that I did. Had, you oh, you did a poll? All right. He had 12 I did people. A poll. Yeah, because N64 12. is garbage. It has garbage. Yeah, 47 lineup. votes oh. so far. Okay. Yeah. 79% and, and guys, are voting for the PlayStation. Only 21% is voting for the N64. And obviously, and, one of those people is Mark. Right. Listen, one of those people also voted, has the handle SNES for life. So, all right, let's take it with a grain of salt. Wait, well, who did he vote for with SNES for life? The PlayStation, obviously. No, if he was SNES for life, why wouldn't he vote for the Nintendo console? Because he's SNES for life. Because it's bad, obviously. Yeah, exactly. I think that that actually gives more credence to his vote for PlayStation. Anyway, Scott, what did you think of this game? (laughs) Okay, so I am actually going to give this my vote for a seal. Um, I do think that it requires some more polish, and Riot is a big studio. If somebody can actually get their ear and show them what they've got wrong in this game, they could fix it up and make this game very, very nice. Uh, but that's my, it's, you know, that's my caveat with it. It's, it, it is a good game. It's got a huge following, but it could be better. Mm-hmm. And there are obviously better auto battlers out there. And I, I think people should, you know, check them out and then report back to Riot and be like, Hey, change this. Right. It needs to be changed then we will have the superior game and it'll be you no know, contest after that. Yeah. And then start the very first thing they need to fix is add it where I can see the lobby at a glance. That's a number one. That, that information is so important to learning how to play these games and winning with a good strategy that it shouldn't be so cumbersome, but go ahead, Scott. Sorry. Yep. So this game is budget arcade approved. Um, we did have Nomic did a audio recording, which I'm going to insert in just a moment. Obviously it'll be, yes, you want to read it. It's going to be, it'll be post, you know, when I'm doing the editing, I'll throw that in there for us. Okay. Hey guys, this is Nomic with your PSA today. I'm here to guide you into making the right choice when it comes to team fight tactics. The key to success, skip it entirely. Head on over to chess rush. Why might you ask? It's a superior game all around. Team fight tactics feels like Riot, which I'm sure you'd expect, but I mean it as a disappointment. Riot has a tendency, from my experience, to make their games overly complicated to offer a challenge to those who stick to their games. They weed out the casual and everyday player by forcing people to research wikis or have them watch streams for the meta. Um, in this game, they succeed by offering limited information on each unit, whether in match or in the main menu. The three main menu options are Battle Pass, Store, because they want more of your money, and uh, planning, which in essence would be really useful, but they don't really do a whole lot there. It gives you portrait pictures and the classes of the portraits, but the units don't really look like they're portraits. And on top of it, it doesn't really tell you like the attack uh, specs or anything like that for the units themselves or their abilities. Now, there are three game modes, normal, ranked, and tutorial, which gets kind of boring after a while. There is not a whole lot of variety there. This game would not be bad if it was really fun, but it's really bland. It's relatively boring. It's lacking excitement and a huge waste of potential. There's really not a whole lot to get out of every match, unless you really want that rank, but I didn't see a real reason to do it. So let me tell you why you should go to Chess Rush. First off, you're not really betraying Riot if you love them that much, because they're owned by the creators, Tencent Games. On top of that, there's plenty of assistance to learn units, combination strategies all within the game. You can even plan out your custom unit strategies and placement strats, on the main menu. If you don't wish to do that, you can simply choose one of the recommended lineups, which is really nice for somebody who just wants to drop in and play without having to like really study the game. And also during a game, this is very important too, and Team Fight Tactics doesn't really have this. When you're buying units, you can actually see how many of the unit you already have, including all of the upgraded units. Also for game modes alone, there's so much to do in Chess Rush, whereas, uh, again, there's only three game modes in Team Fight Tactics. In Chess Rush, there's Classic, Turbo for those who want to play quick games. Um, 
4v4, which is uh, essentially what you can do in guild matches in this game, too. Again, they have a guild, which you can join and have chats with your buddies, and uh, also do those guild wars where you can actually get really good rewards for the battle passes. They're both nine ninety nine, but Chess Rush gives you 100 levels of items. And then after that, all the points that you get, which are called Chess Soul, will actually go towards loot boxes, <laughs> so you can get even more items after your battle pass completes. Whereas Team Fight Tactics has about 36 levels, if I wasn't mistaken, which seems like a really big ripoff for 99. On top of that, Chess Rush is usually around 499, and the first so many days you can actually get a discount, which is really neat, and really cool. On top of that, if you're competitive, um, you can actually play up to what they call Chess Summit. And another big thing for Chess Rush, there's chat and main menu, chat during matches, even voice chat for the party you team up with. Team Fight Tactics has emotes, and that's all I can really find. There might be some sort of chat somewhere in the catalog, some menu somewhere. I didn't see it. The only true fault I can say with Chess Rush is that they try to update and balance the game often, which this last patch is kind of so-so. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of the items. They they kind of mimic more on the Team Fight Tactics side, but they're not. It's it's just different. Either way, they're still at least they update and try to balance the game, whereas Team Fight Tactics I've had for about three, two or three months, and I don't even see a difference after the patch that was installed when I first reloaded it for this uh, for this game of the week. The patch actually failed <laughs> when I first uh, launched the game and kept disconnecting me after that, which would be really frustrating if I was trying to play ranked because I'm sure that would affect my rank. After I relaunched the game a couple times, I found out that there's actually a patch button that shows up for a brief second that I had to manually click to force the patch to go through. After that, it worked fine. But ultimately, there's a reason Chess Rush is at a 4.8 on Apple Store and Team Fight Tactics is a 4.3. It has a ton of potential, but considering how long it's been out, I'm afraid that that's all it's always going to have. It does not get my listener seal. Maybe down the line when it actually upgrades, <laughs> add, maybe they add modes to it or they add some something to keep you coming back. Then maybe I'll give it a, a seal at that point. But as of right now, it's just too boring, too bland too basic and really doesn't stand out. If you guys wish to, you can find me on podcast uh, discord. As Scott can tell you, I talk way too much on there. So feel free to pop on, tell me how wrong I am. If you, if you swing that way, <laughs> um, or if you want to team up on a game, I'm usually up for that too, but I'll uh, see you there. Sounds good. Nomic. Yeah. Great insight there. Nomic. I totally heard what you said just now i didn't i didn't expect his voice to sound like that i've actually played chess rush with nomic so i know what his voice sounds like oh yeah i played call of duty uh warzone with him as well nice voice nomic all right so next game is going to be hold on i hyperscape okay good because i had mentioned doing the madden game on mobile but with hyperscape being out i think we definitely want to jump on that now yeah and i think it just came out recently mm -hmm. too like within the last few weeks another battle i didn't Royale. realize it was yeah, well, no, actually, I think it's a, a different type of game, Jeff. Oh, I thought um, it was a BR. I don't think it's... No, no, I think it's actually... Uh, it's. I think it's uh, more like a hero-based shooter, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, we'll be we'll able find to out next week. Or two weeks. give everybody the info on that. Can I um? Can I address Elliot for a minute? Oh, sure. Oh, you can, yes, you can address please Elliot. do. Address Elliot. Um, so, Elliot, I heard what you said. Well, what... Tessa said. What Tessa said, you mean? Uh, well, Elliot said I'd shoot Tessa, so uh, I heard what he said, too. Um, oh. <laughs> and I just want to say, that wasn't very nice. I'm a very friendly person. And no even though I don't like cats, I feel like words hurt you. And those words hurt Elliot and Tessa. Ooh. Of Elliot and Tessa argue. Even though I got the acronym wrong. Uh, <laughs> so it would be like E I like e how you right? properly ETA? use the term acronym. Thank you, Jeff. It's not hugest, but it'll do. Yeah. Um. So I just want I just want to say, Elliot. You know, I can forgive you, even though we've never talked before. Mm -hmm. I have listened to your podcast, and I yep. do enjoy it. Um. So, uh, thanks. Thanks for listening, Elliot. Yeah. Because stick that in your ear, Elliot. I said ear, but it could have sounded like rear. <laughs> I thought you said ear Elliot. Yeah, all right. So you, you can you find have to us put the on Twitter and Instagram. 
uh, at Budget Arcade. We've got a website, www.budgetarcade.com. You can also find us on Facebook.com slash Budget Arcade. If you want to help support the show, you can join our Patreon. It's Patreon.com slash Budget Arcade. You can purchase t-shirts from HotKeyGaming.com slash budget hyphen arcade and don't forget to use the promo code but biscuits and there's also a link in our show description that has a, uh, a donation link as well yeah and we'll see you guys yeah, next jump time in our Game discord on. too you can talk to us in discord where do they find that discord everywhere, everywhere. our website our twitter yeah. wherever you come want come join us in discord we have fun yes. we, t- we talk all things i am not a- even in the show notes there's a discord Ooh, link. there you go there should be well, whose fault is that? I'll have to check that okay. out, but I'm pretty sure I've got it in there. Okay. Yeah, thanks again, and game on. Bye. Welcome to Grandma's Podcast. <laughs> I say it. Good job. Okay. Hi, I'm Marvelous Joe. And I'm his twin brother, Johnny DC. And together we host the Dynamic Duel Podcast, a weekly show where we debate who has the superior characters between Marvel and DC. It's, it's Marvel. The correct answer is obviously Marvel. No, in reality, DC is better, which we help prove through stat-based simulations of battles between your favorite Marvel and DC characters. We give in-depth profiles of heroes such as Spider-Man and Batman, then discuss, as civilly as we can, who would win in a fight before running a Monte Carlo simulation that reveals who would actually win. In addition to these dual episodes, we also review the latest Marvel and DC films to hit theaters, as well as some of your favorite movies and shows from the past. So if you're a fan of either Marvel or DC, or a fan of both, we'd love to have you come listen as we have a blast every Tuesday. Though really, if you think about it, who's a fan of just DC? Uh, smart people. Attractive people. The list goes on. Check out Dynamic Duel at dynamicduel.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. Imagineville Podcast Network. If you have a family relying on your income, you need life insurance. But finding the best quote shouldn't take a lifetime. That's where Policy Genius comes in. In minutes, Policy Genius could save you 50% or more simply by comparing quotes from America's top insurers. Once you apply, the Policy Genius team handles all the paperwork and red tape. To save on life insurance and get protection for you and your family, head to policygenius.com today.